343 have finally given us a proper look at the free 30 tier battle pass that is coming to Halo Infinite on November 8th with the winter update. However, although it's good, it still leaves a lot to be left desired and I'm going to be talking about that today. Anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new here. I really do appreciate it and it really does help the channel out. But without wasting any more of your time, let's jump straight in. So 343 recently premiered a new video which shows off the new cosmetics that we can be expecting in this winter update battle pass. For the most part, the cosmetics here seem fine enough. It's good to see a lot of these missing reach cosmetics finally make their return, and they are, of course, free. Also, I just want to quickly clarify, if you hear some loud bangs during the course of this video, that is simply because people are setting off fireworks outside. Anyway, a lot of the problems I have with this pass stem more so down to its layout and 343 repeating some of the same mistakes that we've given feedback on time and time again when it comes to the layout of battle passes. This one is honestly laid out much more like an event pass rather than a battle pass. I know it kind of is just a permanent event pass, but this is still really annoying regardless. And I believe, again, there is still a lot of items missing. For example, there is only one armor coating in this entire pass. The first tier is the Mark V B core, and this is fine, but I don't believe this should be the only item on this tier. We know that they can put more than one item on a tier because it is the case in the other battle passes. And anyone that owned the Season 1 battle pass basically unlocks nothing on this first tier. The second tier is an emblem, and you can straight away see that this emblem is present multiple times in this pass, a total of four, which means four slots are just padding. We also have a couple shoulder pads here, the security ones, and it's great to see these. Then there's an XP boost. I don't really need any more of these. Challenge swaps can be fine every now and again, and XP boosts can also be fine, but I believe that these should be on a joint tier rather than just taking up a tier on their own. Like, tier 6 should be the XP boost and the emblem, or it should be the XP boost and a piece of armor. As well, just going back to the shoulder pads, I hate that shoulder pads keep getting broken up into individual tiers too, rather than both being on the same one. It is in Master Chief Collection, I don't understand why it isn't here. That would make so much more room to fit in a lot of the other cosmetics. We then have the Sardanic Visor, which is the one that I believe Cat uses, and it's good to have a free silver visor, and then there's a utility piece. At tier 10, we finally have the return of the CQB helmet, which is one of the most highly requested, and honestly, this is pretty expected. It's good that this is free, it's good that it's here, but then it's followed up by another XP boost at tier 11, and again, another emblem at tier 12. The next couple are a little bit better with some knee pads and Georgie's shoulder pads, the Grenadier ones, and these look beefy as hell. But tiers 16 and 17 are an XP boost and an emblem, so that is so many tiers that are padding, there isn't even any challenge swaps that all double XP boosts. And with the new added XP system, that means you are going to fly through this pass. That isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it does mean you're going to run out of stuff to unlock very quickly. At tier 18 and 19, we get the CQC shoulders, and again, these look great, I might actually end up using these. Tier 20, you get the CQC helmet, another fan favourite, that's great to have. Tier 21 is another XP boost, however, followed by the Bullfrog visor. This visor is also nice, but it is very similar to a bunch of the other ones that we've already got. It's like, sort of, a silverish visor with a very slight tint of blue, it's similar to the MIA one. And it's also very similar to the visor that is also in this past, the Sardanic one. At tier 23, we have our only armor coating in this pass, which is Mower Assault, which means most people that are playing for free are either going to be using that or they're going to be using one of the cadet coatings. I really do believe they should have had more than one when we know that there is definitely more than one missing reach coating. There's that blue and red one, there's a pink one, there's this one, and then I know there's Noble Offensive and Noble Drifter. It seems like some of those might be included in an event, so a lot of those could still be free, but it's a matter of waiting much longer, and it means there's going to be a lack of variety when it comes to the coatings that people are using, especially considering we don't have cross-core coatings yet. Tier 24 is another chest piece, followed by a helmet attachment. It's cool that we've got a helmet attachment here, although since this is also the only one, I feel like you're going to see a lot of people using that when, again, there is multiple reach helmet attachments that haven't been added to the game yet that could have been in this pass. Tier 26 is another challenge swap, and here's where things get a little bit interesting. Tier 27 and 28 are the security shoulders again, but now with the knife. This is kind of cool, but I feel like that should have just been an attachment for the shoulder, rather than spending another two tiers on what is essentially the exact same thing, but with a knife. So four tiers of this battle pass are the security shoulder pads. And then tier 20 knife, you get the same knife, but on your chest, so you can have a Spartan that is covered in knives if you so please. The final item here is the Mark V helmet, and I feel like this and CQB are probably going to be the most popular ones. I feel like you're going to see almost everyone using these with the security shoulder pads since they're at the beginning and the end of the pass. 
Part of me feels like I understand why they've put the security shoulders where they have. It's almost like you upgrade them at the end of the pass. But again, I feel like they could have implemented some kind of system where these are just an attachment for your shoulder rather than separate shoulder pads. I'm not necessarily complaining about the pass the pass's contents because I think again I think everything here is pretty solid but there's still a lot missing that should have been included and it isn't because they decided to pad it out by repeating multiple items whether they be XP boosts or the same emblem four times or again very similar items like with the security shoulders. I think as a whole the pass is still going to be fun to progress through especially now with the newly added XP system it's not going to feel as tedious and I am still going to enjoy unlocking these cosmetics. Again it is free so this is accessible to everyone and people that don't really want to spend any money on the game well then they can now unlock much more in terms of cosmetics that are there permanently that they can use to make their spawn much nicer. I just think there's so many ways that 343 could have improved this. Again, having some items on the same tier would have worked. They've also proven that's something they can do. But I guess whatever's missing from this one might be included in future events. We know that we have Winter Contingency 2 in December, although this is mostly going to focus on Christmas-themed cosmetics, like the Santa hat. I wouldn't be surprised if we get the Snowman helmet and maybe some other cool stuff. And then we have the Joint Fire event, which is probably where we're going to get JFO. That event releases in January, and we don't necessarily know loads about it, but with it being called Joint Fire and JFO being uh, standing for Joint Fire Operations, I wouldn't be surprised if that helmet is included in that event. So that helmet will still be free, you've just got to wait an extra two months, which is unfortunate. It's funny because Moa Assault, the only coating present in the free pass, is actually the one that was supposed to be bundled with JFO, and yet JFO is going to be unlocked at a completely separate time. As a whole, I'd still take this as a W. We know we're getting at least 50 tiers worth of free content if you include the two events. Granted, about 10 of those tiers are honestly like just emblems or XP boosts. We're also supposed to be getting a free kill effect that is coming to the store that's inspired by the birthday party effect from Halo Reach, and this is cool. Like I said, as a whole, I'm very excited for the winter update, and I am still excited for this winter pass. I'm a big fan of the Mark V helmet, and some of the other armor here too is also great, and I'm glad that I'll finally have a bit more variety from a Reach Spartan, and I'm excited to see what other people's Spartans look like after they've finished their passes, and everyone will start to look a little bit different. Well, for the most part, I think as far as helmets go, you're mostly going to see the Mark V and CQB. But with shoulders, there's a little bit of variety. But anyways, how are you feeling about the Winter Update Battle Pass? Are you excited for the events that are coming afterwards? Like I said, they're going to be including some new cosmetics. Although it does seem like some of the Reach stuff still might be tied to the shop, which is unfortunate. I understand why they're doing this, though, because now the core is free, so they don't have to worry about people complaining in that regard. The problem with Season 1 is you had to pay to get the core, and then had to pay extra to get some of those bundles but now with the armor core being free they'll probably bring some of those stuff out as shop cosmetics and this isn't necessarily a bad thing but it is still a little disappointing i'm glad 343 are doing a better job at providing free things to the community so again i'm not complaining here i just feel like they could have done a much better job with this pass i think it'd be a very smart idea to add the cosmetics from the joint fire event actually to this pass rather than doing that as an event pass add it as like an extra 10 tiers to this pass that way they're permanent and people don't really have to worry about it being tied to a FOMO event. Anyway folks, that's all from me and I'll catch you all in the next one.